Heel drops are a great exercise to do to build strong bone and it's less impactful, perhaps less harmful if you have some limitations than jumping or stomping. Hi, I'm Glory B and this is Glory B TV, a lifestyle channel for mature women who want to look fabulous, feel amazing and age gracefully. Well, I feel amazing and I'm aging gracefully. When I was 61 years old, I reversed osteoporosis naturally through diet, supplementation, and exercise. So the exercise that I used the most of the time besides weight training was jumping. But I understand some people really can't jump. They have some issues with their knees or their osteoporosis is worse than mine. And even stomping can be hard. But if you're interested in jumping or stomping, I'll have links to those two exercises at the end of the video and in the description box below the video. Hey, to open the description box, do you go below the video and when you see the word more, tap it. On a phone, you have to tap it twice. That opens the description box. Scroll down and I'll have links to other videos you might be interested in. So for heel drops, I suggest that you have something to hold on to, especially when you're first learning to do this. Like a chair, you can do this in your kitchen and just hold on to the kitchen counter. Now in my other videos, I was always wearing shoes because my feet are really kind of delicate. I've had bunion surgery on both feet. I have narrow feet, I have flat feet. I mean, you name it, I got it all. And I'm the only one in the family got it all. So. I'm really careful, but today I'm on a hard floor. This is ceramic tile with a yoga mat. It's the only yoga mat I have. If I had a second yoga mat, I'd put a second one in here, but I am wearing my socks today. But you can wear shoes if you want. When I buy shoes for any kind of athletic stuff, I always buy running shoes because they have the best impact resistant, you know, they're built for runners. <laughs> who take a lot of impact when they run. So I'm going to start by holding onto the chair. Now I'm gonna give you two hints and two tips when you're doing this. First of all, you don't wanna lock your knees in place. You want a soft knee, just a little bit bent, and you don't wanna have your head forward. If you look in a mirror and you see that you hunch, you want to make sure that you put your shoulders back and your head back so that your head is aligned with your spine all the way down. So what I found is that the suggestion is, or the recommendation is, that with heel drops that you do about 50 of these. Now if 50 in a row is too much for you, do 10. Then go do something else for a couple minutes. Then come back, do 10 more. Go do something else for a few minutes. So that you do a total of 50. So if you want to do these with me, let's do 50 and I'll count them out. We're gonna go up on our toes and, then, and we're gonna come down just like that. I'm not counting yet. All right, so it's just up on your toes and down. And you wanna feel that impact on your heels coming up through your legs. All right, here we go. We'll do the 50. Up, one, up, two, up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six, up, seven, up, eight, up, nine, up, 10, up, 11, up, 12, up, 13, up, 14, up, 15, up, 16, up, 17, up, 18, up, 19, up, 20, up, 21, up, 22, up, 23, up, 24, up, 25, up, 26, up, 27, up, 28, up, 29, up, 30, up, 31, up, 32, up, 33, up 34, up 35, up 36, up 37, up 38, up 39, up 40, up 41, up 42, 
up 43, up 44, up 45, up 46, up 47, up 48, up 49, up 50. Now you might wonder what kind of a stretch you can do to stretch out your calves. I do this every day and I do 30 seconds each and I usually do this in my bedroom. I have some uh, exercises that I do first thing in the morning and I just do them there. So I just stand next to a dresser and hold on to it, but this will do as well. I put one foot back, put the heel down, and I give it a stretch and I count to 30. And then I'm not going to do that now, but you get the idea. And then I do the other one this way. I started doing this several years ago when I was having some really weird foot and leg pain and uh, went to the ortho foot guy and he said, you know, do these calf stretches and you'll be done with whatever pain you're having. So that took care of it. The second exercise you can do is a type of marching walk. You can do this in place. You can do this when you're out walking if you want to. It might look a little funny to people, but you can march around your house. Instead of just, you know, walking like this, you're just gonna lift your knees a little bit more and swing your arms and bring your feet down as hard as you want. Now I'm doing this in socks on a yoga mat that's on ceramic tile, but you could wear shoes. And again, I, I only have running shoes. But the idea is to get that impact on your foot, especially on that heel, as you're walking. So it's just a little bit more impactful on the bone than just going outside and walking around the neighborhood on the sidewalk. So that's march walking. It's just a little higher and a little more impactful. And I can see as I'm walking, I'm moving my yoga mat. <laughs> that was totally unintended. So that's march walking. So please add weight bearing exercises to your routine to build up bone. Whether you have osteoporosis or osteopenia or you're younger and you just landed on this video and you think, you know, when I get older, I don't want to have osteoporosis. So you start doing these weight bearing exercises early, but these two that I've shown you today are good for you if you can't do jumpy, you can't do stompy, you can't do, you know, the more impactful kinds of exercises that I can do now that I'm in osteopenia, you have to know your feet, your ankles, your knees, your hips, you have to know your own body and choose wisely. But please choose something, choose some exercises that you can do and you can join me and millions of other women who've reversed osteoporosis naturally. Check out one of my other videos by tapping its image on the right side of your screen, and I'll see you in the next video.